Hi guys, welcome back and my name is Karthik and I am from isurautomation.com and welcome to my new course Automating with Cypress. And in this course, we are going to talk about how we can get started with Cypress from complete basic. I mean, you don't really have to have any understanding about Cypress and all you need to have is just the information about Cypress. And in this course, we're going to see how we can get started with Cypress without you having to have any prior knowledge. So in this particular video, we're going to just start like a getting started where we're going to do installation and we'll see how we can set up Cypress within our machine. And following this video and following this particular lecture, we're going to see how we can write our simple code and then how we can enhance our writing in more complex fashion. Well, as I said, this particular course, as I told you, is going to be a complete basic course, like complete getting started. If you already have all those information, then this course is not something that you're looking for. You got to be looking for my advanced course, which is available in Udemy. But this course is mostly towards the basics, foundational stuff that you need to learn about Cypress. Well, as I said, Cypress is one of the most interesting tool which has got so many different features which not many automation testing tool available in the market really offers. And the most important thing about this Cypress itself is that this tool is mostly free with all the features that it offers. As you can see, the free features of Cypress includes Cypress app, Cypress cloud, its retriability mechanism, component testing, CI/CD support, reporting, cross-browser testing, and running in multiple different machines, everything is quite free. I mean, the only place where Cypress really makes money is towards cloud, where you need to have some more functionalities that you could probably use in Cypress. But again, even with Cypress Cloud, you can use so many different features for complete free, which is almost much, much enough for you for production grade testing. Well, as that said, we are going to see how we can really cover all these features in this particular course and understand how that we can improve ourselves and learn how that we can use Cypress within our application under test, make our test much, much easier. Well, as I said, the first thing about this particular lecture is going to be installation of Cypress app or the Cypress itself within our machine. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the cypress.io website and this is the place where you can find all the different documentation related to Cypress as I told you on the slide and also it has got so many different information as you can see over here in the home page itself like this Cypress is used by Fortune 500 companies and it has got a Cypress app which is something that you can write, run and debug your test like a pro and you can run in multiple different machines and there are so many different informations available over here and i have already released cypress course in youtube like four years before while well, i already have courses in udemy but this course is more towards the basics and the advanced courses but the one that we are going to be covering is complete basic to be honest well as i said this particular site itself has got so many different documentation but the one that we are going to be using is going to be the first part which is the installation part as you can see over here we'll touch base with the documentation later in this course but for now you can just go and hit this npm install cypress and then you can install cypress itself i mean you can see that there are two options presented at this time one is npm install like this or you can also do a direct download and direct download is going to be applicable only if you are going to be using Cypress just like one time or you want to be doing a re-download of Cypress if your Cypress has been corrupted for some reason or something like that. You got to be using this direct download option. But I don't really recommend the second option. I recommend you to use the NPM install option because this is how you do that in your project. So I'm going to go and select this uh, button over here or click this button. It's going to copy the command for me uh, in the clipboard. And now I'm going to go to my Windows terminal over here and I'm going to paste this particular command by hitting the right click of the uh, mouse and that's going to bring up this whole stuff for me. So I'm just going to hit enter and you will notice that I'm going to get an error here saying the term npm is not recognized as the name of the commandlet function script function or operable program. So what does that mean? We don't really have an npm commandlet recognized within this particular terminal which means this particular cypress as you've seen over here is basically a node.js based application and if you're going to be installing any node.js based application you got to be installing node.js within your machine as well if you are like me 
who has Windows machine and who don't have Node in your machine, you can just go and type Node and if you hit enter, you see that there is no commandlet for the name Node as well, which means we don't really have Node.js. Now, all we need to do is we need to download the Node.js within our machine. So if I just go and search, you see that we're gonna get to this Node.js.org. So if you go to this particular page, you can now download the Node.js. There are two versions of Node.js available. One is 18 and another 20 during time of this recording. But I always recommend you to go with the LTS version instead of the current version because current version, even though it holds latest feature, there may be some features which you probably may not be working with the Cypress itself. Uh, I mean, it won't happen, but in edge cases it might. So rather it is safe to use the LTS version because it is a long-term support version. So we're going to use this version. So I'm going to go and hit click that and it is going to download the Node.js for me in this machine. And once it is downloaded, we can start installing it. And then the command that we had this error, which is this one, is going to essentially work. So you see that now the Node has been downloaded and I'm going to open that and I'm going to install it. And I'm going to add to path. I'm going to hit next, install. So it's as simple as that. And the node is installed right now. And if I go to the terminal over here, let me close that just in case. And I'm gonna run this terminal in the administrator mode because there are some reason why I need to do that in the administrator mode. You'll probably understand that because if we don't run terminal in administrator mode, some of the installation might not work as expected. There we go. So now the terminal is there with the administrator mode. So now if you just go and type the command node and if you hit enter, you see that? we get the node, which means the node is now there for us. And the terminal has been changed to here with a prompt there. So let me exit out of the node really. I don't want it. I think it's quit probably, or maybe control C. Uh, and then I'm gonna start installing the node based Cypress that we just copied from the command line. But guess what, before I even I do that, I'm gonna go to a directory, which is my tryout directory over here. And I'm gonna create a directory called as Cypress demo. And within this Cypress demo directory, I'm gonna run this command npm install Cypress hyphen hyphen save dev. So once I do that, you will notice that now there is no error as well, which was happening to us before. It is just working fine for us this time without any problem. And this is gonna install Cypress for us over here. So if I just do an ls over here, you'll notice that we get three new files been created. I mean, two files and one directory been created. The directory is otherwise called as a node underscore modules folder and there are two files there. So now these three files are basically a supporting files and directories which are required for us to run the Cypress itself. So now we have did the first step to get started with Cypress. So this is the first installation that we gotta be doing. The next one is to open the Cypress app, which is this one as they have mentioned over here, introducing the Cypress app. So that is what we are gonna be opening over here. So once we open that, we will get quite a lot of options that you will see that quickly. But before even I do that, guess what? I also need to open this particular files that has been created within my editor it could be any editor of your choice, but I prefer Visual Studio Code. So if you just go to Visual Studio Code download, you see that there is a go to download option. So you can go ahead and download it. I mean, it's also available for Windows, Mac and Linux. And because I'm using Windows 11, I'm just gonna use this one. And I have already installed that within my machine. So I'm not gonna redo that, but I will let you to do that because that is very important for you to get going. So that is the editor of the choice that we are going to be using in this particular course. So there we go. That is the first requirement. That is another requirement that you have right now. So well, as it said, now we have to open in Visual Studio Code. So how do I do it? There are two ways to do it really. One is you go directly to the directory, uh, which is the tryout directory, go to Cypress demo and right click directory and go to show more option in Windows 11 and use this open in code option. So this is going to open Visual Studio Code for you, something like this. So that is one way of doing it. The other way is if you don't know or you if you already know that, it is very simple, right? All you have to do is just type code 
and hit dot and hit enter. This is going to do the exact same operation that we just did by going through all those directory in the UI. So that is another way of doing it. Now we have Visual Studio Code open with this uh, node folder and these are all installed for us once we did this npm install cypress hyphen hyphen save dev and the hyphen hyphen save dev is basically a flag which tells that you need to install the cypress as a dev dependency you see that that you can find in the package.json file so that's it that's the first part as I told you, second part is going to be a bit more interesting. That is going to open the Cypress itself. So you got to be running a command called as npx. Let me clear the window a bit. npx Cypress. So you need to use this, not npm. This is npx command and Cypress and then do open. So this is a Cypress on command, which is going to help you open the Cypress app. And once I do that, you will notice that now because we are running the terminal in the administrator mode, it is going to open the Cypress form without any hesitation. But if you're running non-admin mode, this might not work based on your system setting. So I recommend you to run terminal in admin mode so that it just works fine. So now we have Cypress. There we go. This is the Cypress app that I was talking about. This app is now created for us based on the command that we executed which is the cypress uh, open command this one and you'll be presented with two options one is the end-to-end -end testing option another one is the component testing option and you'll also notice that the cypress version is version 12.17.3 or 12 .17 .3. Uh, and there are some docs available there is a login option available i mean we'll go through all these things later uh, in this course but for now this is what it is and now I can choose the end-to-end -end test option over here. You see that it says not configured, which means there needs some configurations, right? So let me do that. Once I click it, and if I go to my VS Code as well, you see that now it has a little Cypress folder being created, and it has got some files created automatically. And these are all created because we have some configuration files being created from this Cypress app. And these are crucial files as well. These files plays a crucial role for your whole Cypress to be uh, up and running with all those customizations that we can do later on. So you see that there is a cypress.config.js. It's like the entire configuration for Cypress. And there is a cypress slash support slash e2e.js, which is this file, the e2e.js file, which is especially useful for you to perform some customization for end-to-end -end testing. And there is a command.js, which is helpful for you to create custom Cypress commands and overriding the existing one. And this is very interesting as well. And there is a fixture, which is going to be like a data-driven testing that we used to do. That's what it is, the example.json file. So I'm going to hit continue after I select all these files to be created. And then it is going to present me with choose a browser option. And there is going to be two browsers. One is the Edge browser. Another one is the Electron browser. So you see that in this machine that I have, I have only one browser, the Edge browser. That's the reason why I'm seeing Edge. But if your machine has got different browsers like Chrome or Firefox or Opera, you're going to see all those browsers coming in. So again, Cypress app is cross-browser supported as well. So you're going to see all those browsers. So once you choose the Edge browser and hit the start into end testing in Edge, it is going to do a lot of things for you which I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to pass here. I'll let you to do all this installation first before we even get started with the next lecture or next point of the Cypress and hope you already got the idea of how the installation of Cypress is done. I mean, this is the whole installation to be honest. Once this is done, the next step is all about scaffolded code or the uh, creation of a new test code, which we'll be doing in our next lecture anyways. But this is the first part that you have to understand clearly before you jump the next big stuff, which we'll be talking in our next lecture. Thank you.